So Todd talked about the uh, hip joints, so I'm going to cover mostly about the knee joints. So this is sort of the, the basic stuff, the anatomy that I give to the medical students. So the major players that involve the, the knee joints are, you get your the thigh bone, which is the femur, the shin bones, the tibia, but then outside of it, the muscles are the one that, that the major forces that move the knees around. In front of your knee is your quad, back is the hamstrings. You know, if things, your knees get weak or your legs get deconditioned because of these two muscles, you can end up developing knee pains. So we'll talk about a little bit some of the different causes of pain within the knee joint. Someone comes in with complaint of knee pain, you kind of try and figure out if the pain is coming within the joint or outside the joint, or is this coming from, refer from the hip or the, the spine. So those are the sources of pain. You know, these are sort of the questions I, I ask as part, you know, part of the investigations to try and figure out if the pain is really coming from the knee joint, is it arthritis, or is other stuff that's outside the knee joint as a cause of pain. But, you know, where it is, is it activity related? Is something you've done recently, or there's a recent injury? Um, stiffness is probably the most common complaint with arthritis. For me, the, the standard x-ray for us, this is sort of the, my big beef, is a lot of people take x-ray without standing up. It's important you need to get a knee standing up, and you see how, where the alignment of the leg is, and see how much wear there is on the cartilage. So this is sort of the typical alignment here. You know, with the, the, this is the, the joint, the, the center axis right there. It should go from the center of the hip through the middle of the knee down to the center of the ankle. Here, you can see the difference here. This is normal joint and this is a little arthritic joint and you have to wear out over there. So the dilemma I see a lot is as people get more active and there's injuries involved, you get arthritis at a younger age. The conservative treatment, as Todd talked about earlier, activity modification, weight loss, anti-inflammatory, physical therapy, and injection. My goal is to try to delay the surgery as long as possible, get to the point where you everything else failed, then we talk about surgery. And so that's the approach I take. But uh, as for a surgical option, we talk about the arthrogastric debridement. If the meniscus is torn and is really catching, I think a scope can help in terms of going to clean it out, make it smoother without catching on you. Um, high tibial osteotomy, that's usually reserved for younger patients who have a, a, a malalignment knee where there's an abnormal wear on one side. You can break the bone and take a wedge and realign the leg. A uni, which uh, a big resurgence over the last 10, 15 years, a lot of people do a lot of partial knee just because potentially you can do a little smaller incision, a little less invasive onto, in, the, in the muscle so you recover a little faster. And then last and not least is the total knee replacement. And here is just the last thing, just basically restore, the, make sure that the, the kneecap tracks well because that's one of the common problems after a total knee replacement. If the kneecap doesn't track well, it continues to cause pain within the, the joint. So the idea is just this, you know, you could take a, a, a knee like this, then you um, you do a knee replacement, you get level out the joint line here, make it neutral, and that everything is nice and balanced on both sides.